Throw three darts at the map. Toss in three wildly distinctive personalities. I like the instant glue because it bonds instantly. Plus three clever projects. And you've got a craft show that'll have you saying, that's clever. I'm Geraldine Dufry from Chicago, Illinois. I love bookbinding and I love polymer clay. Today I'm going to make this nature inspired polymer clay book. My studio is in the basement through the backyard. This is where I do all my bookbinding and polymer clay. Start my polymer clay book by conditioning and rolling out green polymer clay. I'm going to make a couple of layers of polymer clay so it's really thick. I want the book to be thick, but I don't want it to be too heavy, so I'm going to use an ultralight clay for the middle layer. I'm going to use the template to trim the ultralight clay a little bit smaller than the book is actually going to be. This is a really sharp knife that most polymer clay artists use. It's thin and cuts through the clay really nicely. I'm going to surround the ultralight clay with another piece of the darker green. I want to fuse these layers together so that there's no bubbles. The unbaked clay will stick well enough to itself that I don't have to use anything to glue the layers together. I'm going to build the walls of my assemblage inside the book with copper mesh. It's easy to cut the mesh to size with a rotary cutter or scissors. I made templates in order to help me fold the walls to the proper size. I lay it down pretty much around the ultralight and try to get it square. My next layer of clay isn't going to want to stick to the copper mesh, so I'm going to add a layer of liquid polymer clay to help it out. So I'm working on my front cover for the polymer clay book, and the outside is going to be green, and the inside is going to start with a layer of white clay, and that's what I'm going to put on next. this the same thickness all the way around, I'm going to add another layer of the green clay. And then take another template for trimming the edges. I want to flip the book over now so I can work on the other side. So I'm going to put this form inside so it doesn't collapse. And so that that doesn't stick, I'm going to sprinkle some cornstarch inside. Just to support the form a little bit more, I'm going to slide these other pieces of mat board under the sides. I want to decorate the front cover with a birdhouse to go along with a the nature theme of the book. I use another template to cut out the birdhouse. I went ahead and made this embossed copper plate to look like a door plate for the house. My husband brings these to me from downtown. They're street sweeper needles. You know your husband loves you when he brings you rusty bits. I'm making the hole for the screw now, but when I bake, I'm going to take the screw back out. And I just want to put some starter holes in for the binding. I'm going to flip the book over using this tile, and then I'm going to weight it down with another tile to put it in the oven. This piece is baked for about an hour, and it's also cooled under the weight, and now I'm going to glue the rusty bits on just with instant glue. I like the instant glue because it bonds instantly. Once all the rusty bits are glued down, I flip it over and I'm going to decorate the inside. I put some mica powder into the liquid polymer clay. Mica powder is colored small mica bits, and it's in a powder form. And you can mix it into anything, but don't eat it. I'm using an embossing tool, and I'm just going to write in the liquid clay. I usually write words that relate to the theme of the book, in this case, a nature theme. After I've etched in all the words, what I want to do is decorate what will look like the pages of the book, and I'm going to do that with white and translucent polymer clay mixed together and striped. I'm going to put them through the pasta machine. I'm going to use the one with the motor because it needs to be powerful. And now it looks like the edges of the book, so I'm going to glue them to the edges of my book here. 
And when I'm finished all my futzing, it goes back in the oven. So I baked the cover for 30 minutes, and then I added the key. And I've also made a back cover, very same way, except I didn't include the pages on the edge here, and the back green is plain. I'm gonna mix some brown paint up with the secret ingredient, dirt. This dirt is from all of my travels. Some's from Chicago, some's from Arizona, some's from Wisconsin. Always picking up dirt. I just dress the back cover the same way. I'm using regular acrylic paint, which is well with dirt. And I'm gonna rub off the excess. And this area is much too shiny, so I'm gonna add a layer of black acrylic paint and dirt. I'm ready to buy my book. I tore pages out of an old book and I folded them in half. Each group of four pages forms a signature and when I put all the signatures together, that's what will make the bound book. I cover each piece with a small bit of decorative paper. I use this template and this little cradle in order to mark holes in each signature. I'm gonna sew the signatures in to create the spine. I'm using wax linen thread and six needles. This type of binding is called a Coptic binding. It was invented in the fourth century, which is about a thousand years before the Gutenberg Bible. I've sewn in all my signatures and my binding is complete and it's strong enough to hold my polymer covers together. I've also added some elements relating to the nature theme. My polymer clay book is complete and I think it's spellbinding.